Captain's Log, Stardate 6923.4. The Enterprise is completing a survey of the Calandra Sector to study the aftereffects of a Class Three ion storm which passed through the region two days ago. Mr. Spock, status of sensor analysis of the area. Scans are nearly complete, Captain. The ion storm that traversed this sector was particularly disruptive due to high concentrations of anti-decion particles. Any transcender-based technology would have been seriously damaged if not completely destroyed by the storm. It's a good thing no Starfleet vessels were in the vicinity. Let me know when the science department has enough data and we'll set course for our next destination. Captain, long-range sensors indicate a vessel in orbit of the second planet in the Gamma Sagani system, Novara 2. Readings indicate that the ship's power emanations are quite low. It could be in distress. The vessel lies directly in the path taken by the ion storm. Any life form readings? Not yet. We are not close enough to make that determination. Continuous sensor scans. I want more information about that ship. Lieutenant Uhura, anything on subspace distress frequencies? Nothing, Captain. I've checked emergency and standard communications channels. All silent. That's not surprising. Subspace communications equipment is very sensitive to ion storms. Could be their subspace radio has been damaged. Correct, Captain. I'd like to investigate. That ship's crew could be in danger if life support has been damaged. We can come back later to finish those ion storm survey scans. Not necessary, Captain. Science section reports survey scans now complete. Very well. Mr. Sulu, change course for Navarro 2, Warp Factor 5. Aye, Captain. Warp 5. <laughs> Approaching Navarra 2, Captain. Establish standard orbit, Mr. Eriks. Aye, sir. The alien ship is currently on the other side of the planet, Captain. Report on Navarra 2, Mr. Spock. According to a report by the USS Binghamton 60 years ago, Navarra 2 is a Class M world orbiting a relatively young Type G star. The planet has a very narrow, habitable, temperate zone, extending only 20 degrees above and below the equator. The planet is home to a race of sentient humanoids who were at that time in a pre-industrial stage of development. They would now presumably be in an early industrial era, roughly equivalent to Earth circa 1830 AD. Further details include... There's the alien ship! Spock, report. Scans coming in now. The vessel appears to be a long-range courier of Gorland design, one or two man crew. Its systems have been disrupted in a manner consistent with a Class Three ion storm. Life support is operating at a nominal level, propulsion and defensive systems non-operational. Communications and sensor systems appear undamaged. What about the crew? Sensors indicate one inhabitant, a Gorlan male, and he appears healthy. Lieutenant Ahura, hail him. Perhaps he requires assistance. Aye, sir. I have the ship's master, Captain. He's eager to speak to us. On screen. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the Federation Starship Enterprise. Our scans indicate that your ship has been recently damaged. Do you require assistance, sir? Captain, I'm glad to speak to you. I am Revic, master of this ship. I was passing through this sector bound for Arpod 4 and Marcus 2 when my ship was hit by an ion storm. Many of my ship's systems are down. I would be grateful for any assistance you could offer. Sir, I've studied Mr. Spock's scans of Revic's ship. An engineering team of five from the Enterprise could repair his system in less than two days. Revic, we could beam a repair team over to help get your ship back on its feet. Thank you, Captain. That would be much appreciated. I'm sending transport coordinates now. Captain's log started at 6923.6. The Enterprise is in orbit of Navarra 2, while Mr. Scott's engineering team is assisting in repairs to Revic's vessel, which encountered an ion storm while on a courier run through the system. Interesting. Something, Spock? Possibly nothing, Captain. Revic's ship is a courier vessel, but it is configured strangely. It possesses an excess of sensor, deflectors, and communications equipment. It also has an oversized cargo bay, almost filled with raw materials and foodstuffs. And its engines, to accommodate the space taken up by the cargo bay and all of the enhanced equipment, the normal engines listed for this particular design of Gorland Courier 
have been replaced with a smaller, less powerful propulsion system. Enhanced sensors and deflectors, huh? Extra cargo space. A courier ship not built for speed. Additional readings coming in. Sensors are detecting an energy signature in the space above the planet, indicating that a vessel has been in continuous orbit for several years. Captain, I'm picking up old-style radio transmissions. On speakers, Lieutenant. Aye, sir. Why would Revik be transmitting on that frequency? That's just it, Captain. They're not coming from his ship. The transmissions are coming from the planet. From the planet? Confirmed, Captain. That's impossible. Aren't the Navarans in an early industrial period? They shouldn't be able to make radio transmitters for nearly a hundred years. Nevertheless, the transmissions are being made, and it appears they are being directed into space. Could they be talking to Revik? What's he doing here? Why not ask him? Yes, I think I will. Lieutenant Uhura, get Revik on ship to ship. Right away, sir. He's coming through now, sir. Yes, Captain? Can I help you? Mr. Revik, we're detecting radio transmissions from the planet below. As you might know, the inhabitants shouldn't have radio technology, yet they are sending radio messages into space. I don't understand. My question is, are they talking to you? What? No. I don't know anything about this. Surely it's possible that the radio waves may be natural in origin. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's all for now. Enterprise out. That's odd. You don't believe him, do you? He's obviously hiding something. We should... We can't do anything at the moment, and we shouldn't make any more accusations. We don't have enough facts. Yet.